An Oscar-nominated actress and an amazing ice skater, Jean Crane's career was at its peak during the 1950s and came to a premature end in the early 70s. Did you know that she took a screen test with Orson Welles? Let's take a look at more secret facts about her in this video. Her father was a school teacher. Crane was born Jean Elizabeth Crane on May 25, 1925 in Barstow, California to George A. Crane and Loretta Carr. George was an English school teacher who moved with the entire family to Inglewood, California at Walnut Avenue after Crane's birth because he found a better teaching position in the city. Both of her parents were Irish Catholic, and after they divorced in 1934, she moved with her mother to Van Ness Avenue in Los Angeles. She screen tested with Orson Welles when she was in school. Jean Crane was a renowned ice skater when she was in school, and she was given the title of Miss Pan Pacific at the Pan Pacific Auditorium in Los Angeles. She also won the title of Miss Long Beach when she was just 16 years old. She was still in high school when she was discovered by Orson Welles, one of the most famous filmmakers at the time. She was touring RKO Studios when she was asked to take a screen test with him. She failed to get the part or even impress anyone, but the audition did give her enough confidence to realize that acting was what she wanted to do for the rest of her life. She quickly enrolled at UCLA to study drama after she graduated from high school and managed to win a minor role in a film by Fox Studio when she was 18 years old. She married her husband against her mother's will. Crane married Paul Brinkman on December 31, 1945. Her mother was vehemently against the marriage, but Crane decided to go against her wishes and they became estranged for some time. Brinkman was seven years older than Crane. They eloped and married at the Church of the Blessed Sacrament in Beverly Hills, California. Brinkman was a contract player at RKO Pictures who went by the name of Paul Brooks. They had seven children together. She took an entire year off from films when she had her first child with Brinkman. Crane remained married to Brinkman until his death in 2003. In the 1950s, they came close to getting a divorce when Crane got an interlocutory divorce decree. Both of them said that the other person had been unfaithful. Crane claimed that Brinkman was living off of her earnings and that he had been abusive. Brinkman responded to the accusations by calling them wild, irresponsible, and untrue, and saying he was deeply shocked at how the events had transpired. He acknowledged that there was some tension between the couple because of Crane's mother, but most of the accusations were far-fetched. He even went so far as to say that her mother was responsible for trying to break up their marriage. When Brinkman accused Crane of having an affair with another guy, she said, He has already broken my heart. Now he's trying to break my spirit. They came to terms with what happened and reconciled on December 31st, 1956, and they never divorced because of their Catholic faith. Brinkman later became a successful businessman and a top executive at an arms manufacturing company. Two of her children died in the 90s. As mentioned before, she had seven children with Paul Brinkman. In the early 90s, two of them died and it crushed Crane from the inside. One of her children died from chronic alcoholism and the other one from a heroin overdose. The remaining five children are still alive. She never won an award but did receive an Oscar nomination. It's a shame an actress like Jean Crane never won any awards because she was great at what she did. She was nominated for an Oscar award for Best Actress for her role in the 1949 film Pinky. Pinky was probably her most memorable film. She starred as the lead character Pinky Johnson, a nurse who operates her own clinic in the Deep South. The award went to Olivia de Havilland. Crane eventually got tired of working for Fox Studios and decided to leave after making 23 films for them. She was more interested in experimenting and finding more serious roles now, so she started making films for Warner Brothers and then signed a contract with Universal Studios, which offered her better roles. In 1950, she was called the Best Actress of the Year by the National Gaelic Athletic Association, a Roman Catholic group. She was a Republican and conservative in her beliefs. Crane considered herself a conservative who supported Richard Nixon throughout the 1960s. She took her political and religious beliefs seriously, which is why she never divorced Paul Brinkman, despite accusing him of having physically abused her. She spent much of her life fighting for the Republican cause. In 1969, she attended six Washington, D.C. balls with her family to celebrate Nixon's inauguration. She and another actress were reported to be Nixon's Hollywood aides. She was called Hollywood's number one party girl. When she was at the peak of her stardom in the 40s and 50s, she was given the title Hollywood's number one party girl because she had a habit of partying a bit too much. In fact, in one interview, she mentioned that she was invited to over 200 parties a year. She said, I can't go to all of them, of course, so I try to make the ones that sound like the most fun. 
Crane and Breekman once attended a huge dinner party that was thrown by a Brazilian millionaire named Jorge Guinlil and his wife. The millionaire took all of his guests to the Bacambo leader. One of the guests at the party was Loretta Young. She was also a model. She started her modeling career in 1941 when she was discovered by a talent scout at Max Reinhardt Playhouse. She was awarded the title of Camera Girl of 1942. She appeared on the cover of Yank, the Army Weekly twice, once in 1944 and the second time in 1945. She was also featured on the cover of Life magazine in 1946. She had a pet lioness. She named her Shasha. Her neighbors weren't happy with the lioness, and Crane was eventually forced to give it to the Los Angeles Municipal Zoo. Unfortunately, nothing else is known about the lioness. She told columnist Luella Parsons about her lioness, saying, It broke my heart, but Paul and I didn't feel it was safe with the baby. However, the lion never showed any mean traits. She often visited her pet lioness with her husband at the Griffith Park Zoo. Crane's film career is remembered through a collection of memorabilia that can be seen at the Cinema Archives at Wesleyan University in Connecticut. The collection was assembled by Charles Finley, a publicist at 20th Century Fox. Crane died of a heart attack two months after the death of her husband in October 2003. She's buried at the Santa Barbara Cemetery. So what's your favorite Gene Crane film? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.